Hello, everyone. My name is Kaylor, and welcome to another episode of Community Voices. We are very excited to have as our guest for today, Malcolm Jenkins. Malcolm, thank you for joining us. Oh, Malcolm, yeah. I gotta take it off of mute. <laughs> thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, we actually wanted to start the conversation with, as appropriate as your shirt is um, showing, Juneteenth. And, you know, we really wanted to start with just getting your kind of views and perspectives on um, how you view, view uh, excuse me, how you view Juneteenth and how you celebrate and honor the holiday. Yeah, I think the way that I've, you know, I've, I've I didn't learn about Juneteenth or at least the meaning of it uh, until, you know, probably five, six years ago, you know, before then I had heard about it, really didn't understand it. And so to me, the way I like to see it is, is really, it's a very ironic um, <laughs> celebration because it's not the actual day uh, that African-Americans became free in this country. It's just the, the day that the very last African-Americans realized it. Um, and so it's this idea of like celebrating uh, the mental um, liberation um, from slavery and, and the idea of imagining, you know, convening, celebrating um, our freedom and imagining through community what we can build uh, going forward. And really, that's, you know, how I celebrate. I usually invite a bunch of friends, families, people uh, that I do business, Black and Brown people who I do business with um, to just, you know, convene, uh, enjoy one another and, and, uh, talk about some of the ways that we can collectively move forward. Yeah, that's great. And I think that really does help for those of us or those in the um, in the greater country who are kind of a little bit newer um, to the Juneteenth understanding and celebration. So we also would love to just hear from you how you kind of view the rise and awareness for Juneteenth and how you kind of would recommend for those who are newer to the celebration to be able to observe themselves. Well, I think, you know, it's it was it was one of those things that it's not really a celebration uh, like any other holiday, right? And when we're there's nothing really to celebrate. The if anything, and I, I was thinking about this earlier. I was like, if anything, um, it, it's ironic that we don't actually celebrate the day of emancipation, uh, which is 1863, January 1st, which would mean we should start the day of the you know first day of every year. Yeah. celebrating emancipation of, of, of black folks but we what we don't and so then you have to figure out well then it's not necessarily about being free it's the recognition of it and there's nothing necessarily to do um but to at least acknowledge that that a lot of the things that we believe to be barriers a lot of the things that we see as reasons why we can't do something um sometimes aren't real <laughs> and all it takes is community and, and a collective effort to to rise above those circumstances and so for me, that's that's really how I celebrate it. And because it, before it was a national holiday, I think everybody celebrated it a little bit, you know, different. Because again, it's not we're not necessarily celebrating the day we got our freedom. It's just the idea of knowing it. And so there is no, you know, and and that and so it's more of a mentality than it is a day. Oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. I appreciate the the kind of insight into the ways that, um, you know, you're looking at it as an individual, but also appreciating that there's others and other ways to kind of appreciate it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I do want to just kind of um, also just ask from your side, you know, what resources you might recommend for other people to at least learn more about both Juneteenth and that January 19, uh, excuse me, 1863 first day. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, like anything, you find them in, in books or just research. There's so much content now on, on you know, YouTube or just the internet um, that a quick Google search will give you, you know, everything that you need. It's really not even, it used to be, you know, people would ask like, give me your top 10 books, you know, all of these things. And it's like, you don't yeah. even need those. Just <laughs> type in Juneteenth, where did it start? How, you know, what's about it? Start to figure out what was going on around then and, and, and you know, you it's a it's a very interesting holiday um, that means a lot more to to people depending on where you live in the country. You know, I'm from New Jersey, so you know I didn't, which is why Juneteenth wasn't a big deal <laughs> to to my family growing up. I didn't know about it in my community growing up, uh, but if you go to Texas, it's a everybody yeah. celebrates it, right? Because that's where it originated, and so there is this. Um, it's, it's like this national game of telephone, right? And, and like news, but it talks, but it shows the, the importance of community and communication and the ability to, to have 
networks and links between different Black communities and Black people all over the country no matter, and all over the world for that matter, wherever we are. It's this idea of like, this, these are the things that happen when we're disconnected. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that, um, you know, the, the expanse of social media helps at all with some of those kind of communications and communities that we could amplify as well? Yeah, I believe so. I think communicate, uh, it, you know, social media is beautiful in that form that it connects us to so many different people that we're able to pass ideas and share information, you know, at the at the uh, click of a button. Um, but I do think um, what that calls for now is is because there is a flood of just information, not all of it true, not all of it real. Right. It's um, it, it we are at a place where authentic um, and original content is is needed that is specifically geared to these stories and this history um because oftentimes you know these types of histories have been you know buried um and we see that there's a big effort now to you know to edit and be very selective of what new you know uh um, events in history that we are allowed to teach and i think that's a dangerous thing and so days like this are um, ones that we really celebrate things that were, you know, unwritten. Again, this is not the day that emancipation took place. It's the day that we passed the word, you know, finally down all the way to the end of uh, that that uh, train. And so, yeah, it, it's, it's really about those concepts, understanding that we are free, that we can do all of these things that that, you know, sometimes we used to think we couldn't if we collectively unite and do it as a community. Thank you. Thank you for your perspective. And thank you for, um, you know, that, that detailed um, dive into Juneteenth. I appreciate it. Um, we did actually want to, um, you know, give your um, foundation, the Malcolm Jenkins Foundation, a shout out. You know, um, we think that you're doing a lot of great work on there. So we wanted to um, give you the opportunity to just kind of speak about the origins and like what kind of drove you to creating the Malcolm Jenkins Foundation. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing we've been doing work now since 2010. So 12 years of, of work. Um, and it really started because I was doing a lot of things in the community, you know, through the, I was with the New Orleans Saints at the time. Um, and so I was doing some of the outreach, you know, through the NFL, through the team. It's your, you visit schools, you read books, you know, your natural kind of random acts of, of kindness. Um, and my mom really came to me and she was, you know, was just like, we should, you should start a foundation. And that way it's not about you have, you know, just doing these kind acts, but it's like, we can actually measure impact when you focus on one specific thing in one area and, and then scale that as you go. Yeah. And so in 2010, we started the foundation and, you know, in New Orleans and started with scholarships. Since then we've given over $250,000 of scholarships. And then we bled that, that um, the foundation into all of the places that I've called home over the years. And so now we operate in um, Ohio, Louisiana, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey, where I'm from, um, with programs ranging, you know, from food giveaways to we used to do football camps, STEM programs, scholarships. Uh, and now the major focus that we're doing uh, as we came, or well, we're still in it, we thought we were coming out of a pandemic. One of the big things we saw um, was just the di digital divide and the need for online education. Yeah. Um, and one of the things, and also we're with the economy doing what it is, a, a way for people to look at uh, getting into the job force um, in non-traditional ways that aren't, you know, your four, through four-year institutions and then going. Um, and so we wanted to create, like, how can we reach people? And so we're building an online digital uh, curriculum that will um, showcase some of, you know, the, the country's, the, like, hottest, you know, uh, folks in specific injury uh, industries that may have not taken had a traditional you know road or path to that success and really break down um, you know in in a curriculum format you know how to look at uh, some of those things and we'll and we'll start those as pilots in the schools that we already have partnerships with uh, and really grow that to scale to bring this kind of education uh, to kids in schools around the country. That's incredible. That's incredible. Um, what do you see as some of the challenges when it comes to like these different opportunities and identifying them and then, you know, the process of scaling them, like you mentioned? Yeah, I think this, the, the two things that I think almost every charity uh, is going to deal with is, or in any organization that, for that matter, is 
um, scaling and funding um, and mainly for sustainability. Right. Mm-hmm. And especially now that I'm a retired athlete and and I can't rely on just my checks, you know, uh, but you also realize, you know, no, most of the time we're doing fundraisers. People are, you know, donating one time and, and we do that every year and it pays for that year. But um, for growth and then sustainability into the future so that these programs don't just fade away if we can't continue to keep up with those with that hustle because that's a grind is we need long-term partners, people who actually believe in the work that we're doing, um, who can see the impact that's happen, happening and want to elevate and, 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 uh, and grow that exp- exponentially with long-term p- commitments as partners in these things. And so that's really what we're looking for. That's the call to action uh, for all of those who support the work and see the work. Um, we are looking for long-term partners to really grow that um, and, and expand it and, and bring it um, more efficiently to more kids. Well, that's amazing. And, you know, I think from our side on JD Finish Line, we really appreciated the work that you have been doing and to, you know, hear you talk about all that work. We're excited to be able to contribute a donation afterwards um, towards your work and towards your foundation's great cause. We appreciate that so much. Thank of you. Of course, of course. Well, Malcolm, I want to thank you for your time. You know, um, you know, congratulations on your retirement as an NFL player, an incredible career on the field, and of course, an incredible impact on and off the field with it. So, you know, you mentioned it in your foundation, but you sound like you're still going to be a pretty busy man. Do you want to give a shout out to the people about what else you got going on? Yeah, I am a busy. Somehow, I'm busier now than when I was playing. Uh, <laughs> But it's, um, you know, it's there's so many different things that, that we're getting on. Um, um, everything from clothing store, we've got my, one of the biggest things is, is storytelling, right? Yeah, I've always been known to use my voice on my platform. But I've always been frustrated about how um, my voice is subject to somebody else's stage. Uh, therefore, how it gets delivered, the context around it, all of those things are out of my control. And one of the way, one of the things I wanted to do to gain that control over my own voice was started my own production company. And that's really, you know, started a, a that's taken up a lot of my time um, is, is I enjoy to write, you know, everything from, um, you know, poetry to think pieces to um, um, even writing scripted shows. And so that's really been, um, that's taking up the majority of my time is writing and, and getting into re- really storytelling and bringing, hopefully bringing, um, you know, nuanced black stories to, to the mainstream um, just because <laughs> we need those stories. We need to be represented so much, so much, um, is there so much power in imagery and film and, and dramatics to really um, unpack some of the same issues that I've been talking about more directly um, in, a, in, a, in a nuanced way and, and, and really bring people's guard down to create discussion and, and hopefully change. Yeah, that's incredible. That does sound like a lot of work too. So I appreciate your creative outputs and appreciate you giving us a little bit of time to speak with us about you know all Juneteenth and your foundation and overall just what's the next for you. No problem, thank you for Thanks. having me. Have a good holiday weekend. You too. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. All right.